few ways of using workflow. Uh, one of them I wanted to show you is called travel requests. And I don't know if Naum brought it down, but we'll check it. I thought this was probably one of the coolest ones. In the provost office, um, they have a process where um, certain individuals um, send in travel requests. And at the end of that travel request routing, the provost himself has a stack of requests that's sitting on his desk. All right, so then he has to go in, look at them, do his approve or deny. So what I did was I created the travel request form. I didn't do any of the graphics. Now, who did those back there? Literally, it looks just like the room reservation one. But in this case, you know, it's just going to fill out certain individuals, uh, certain uh, information that they felt was necessary. Once it's submitted, it comes and it's stored inside of this travel request list. So I'm going to show you one that I submitted, and you can probably guess that it got denied, but I'll show you how cool this was as soon as it opens up. When the provost receives the document itself, he can click on it just like I did now. He can click approve or deny on the bottom and reasons why, and then submit it back to the person that sent it. So you can see mine. I went ahead and um, requested to go to Hawaii using gift monies from vendors, probably very illegal. Um, purpose of the trip to party, and there's no benefit to UTEP and then it was denied, not an official function. All right, so that's just a quick example um, on how you can create forms internally. Um, I know that, I think Georgina had me create one for student leave um, so that she can track students that, that request time off from their hours. Any questions on forms? Awesome. All right, we're going to go over one couple more things, and then we should be done here. On the left-hand corner here of the home page, I want to show you how, what the differences are. All right. On the document share, which you'll see on this section, we have shared documents. Now keep in mind, any person that has a UTEP account can log in to our SharePoint and look at the front page, all right? Now, there might be ways that you might not want, we might not want everybody in the world or in UTEP to see that, so we can lock down individual folders if we want to. However, in this case, this is an area where I created folders for each of our departments, and my thought behind this is that if financial aid had a document that they needed all the departments to use, then they store it into this centralized location and they grab that document. Really should have no reason for us calling financial aid up saying, hey, can I get that document? Where they can just put it into this folder and everybody will have access to it. So each of our departments, if you have documents that you need to share with everybody else, highly encourageable for you to put this in there. We can also track versioning. So if you change anything on that document, we can check versioning and say, hey, this is version uh, 1.4. Now. In, in my case, this is my department. I have stuff in here that I have shared, but you see this folder called ES Tech Restricted. If you guys were to click on to the ES Tech folder, you're not going to see that folder. So that one I created just as a secret um, internal only folder that only people that are in my department have the ability to, to log into that one. So I just wanted to show you that, yes, we have folders that are public, but if you needed some that, are, that you only need certain people to have access to, then we will be able to get it from, we can lock them down on this portion. Now within the file sharing itself, that's where you can go in and you can do, um, you can um, hit alerts or you can share that document. You can check it out and edit it. If you do that, that's another thing where um, if you're collaborating 
with somebody on creating a PowerPoint, for example, you check it out. If I go in there and I try to click on that document, I won't be able to make any changes because you've checked it out. And then no one will be able to make changes until you checked it back in, which is cool. Now, multiple people working at once on one document, it's, that's not possible, at least with this. It's the same thing at that point with a G drive or a Z drive or something that you have that way. It'll show you that currently this person has it open. You can you'll open it up as read only, but any changes that you make won't be saved on there. So that's why the check-in, check-out process is a little bit better. Now there's a lot of things that you can do when you get into that folder. One thing that I like doing is if you have a huge document that's inside the folder, it's usually not good practice. I don't know if you guys know this, but it's not good practice for you to get like a two meg and above document, put it, stick it into an email, and then forward it out to 20 people. That takes up a lot of bandwidth, um, and a lot of times, some people won't even be able to accept that because the amount, the, as big as that folder is. One thing you can do is you can send it, and you can send it as an email link. You can take that link, forward it on to whoever you have um, that's interested in looking at that document, and they just click on that, and it'll open up the document right away. Everything is going to be stored inside of um, the SharePoint page. It doesn't take up any of your... Outlook space. All right, that's a cool one. All right, so let me show you how this thing ties in to your Outlook and other things. All right, so from a calendaring perspective, by the way, here's Ed's task. Oh, and that's our fake um, cap facts discussion. I had forwarded off to somebody else and said they couldn't, I, I put them to sleep with that. Usually happens all the time. Well, we'll wait till this loads. I, I have the best computer in the world here right now. All right. So let me show you something. Right now, um, this is my personal calendar. Um, right after this, I, I do have my Thursday salad day with my team. Pretty cool. But on this one here, I've checked it off on this side. These are the, all of the calendars that I've tied my Outlook with, SharePoint with. So I clicked on Enrollment Services Support, which is 131. And this is the current schedule that we have inside for today. All right? That's awesome because at that point, I didn't have to log in to SharePoint to check the calendar. So if you're always scheduling appointments inside one of our conference rooms, the best thing for you to do is to tie into one of these calendars and you can take a look at it. Now, if you have the ability to make reservations yourself, which you guys don't, I'm just going to show you an example. I can create a new appointment here. Have it there. And for today, there's the testing site, testing that I just did. 